Hey folks, out of my walk, it's been raining quite a bit here in Costa Rica. Seems like rainy season is upon us, but the sun's out. So I'm strolling the hood and um, as per the request of a friend of mine, I want to touch on the topic of trauma. And uh, I made a series of videos about a month ago on trauma. And so I want to revisit that topic and share some perspectives and ideas, concepts to hopefully provide some insight and um, clarity on the, this topic of trauma. So what is trauma? And the definition, there's a couple definitions that I really like, but the definition that I use or that I'll share with you is trauma is the response of a nervous system that is overwhelmed. And if the nervous system becomes overwhelmed by stimulus and that information can't be processed or resolved, the nervous system does something really uh, intelligent, which it fragments and it, and it literally uh, takes the unresolved energy and it sort of stores it in a fragmentation so that the rest of the organism can continue functioning. And if that fragmentation is never put back into its place, put back into wholeness, then what happens is we start to live with these little fragmented parts of us that you could call them traumatized parts of us, but they're physiologically speaking, they're parts of us that have been fragmented and um, never brought back into integrity with the whole organism and the function of the whole organism. And so that fragmented piece actually instructs unconsciously the entire organism by sending a constant signal of basically what happened. And so this is the story replaying itself in the subconscious and unconscious mind, which then dictates the behavior of the conscious mind because that fragmented part is trying to reach resolution. Everything in life is striving for harmony and balance and, and unity, unification ultimately. However, when that, so this happens, right? There's a fragmentation, there's a trauma, part of the nervous system, system splits off and then the story is replaying in this little smaller part of us separate from the whole in informing the, our consciousness, our conscious mind, I should say, of sort of the result or, or what happened to prevent then, hopefully, that from happening in the future. It's a protection. And, and so it, it scans constantly as like in terms of vigilant. It's vigilant of um, energies that look similar or are familiar to the thing that happened that was overwhelming. And so that is what happens when there's trauma, when, when the system undergoes trauma. Now, that brings me to the next point. So what do we do about that? And Because and, we're all, most of us at least, in, in the human population, to a greater or lesser degree, are traumatized, whether it be our own personal traumas. And a trauma can be something, like think of how we're, we're very emotional creatures and we're very socially driven. And so traumas can happen when there is a threat to our social status, like an insult or, or um, you know, as children, and as we're ev evolving into adults, one of the most important things is to be accepted by 
the social group that we are a part of. It's actually critical to our health and our well-being to be part of the tribe. And if there's something that threatens our um, sense of togetherness and unity with the creator organism of the tribe, it's interesting, right? There's a, there's a fractal here that's happening, if you're following me. If something threatens that and we perceive that we will be cast out, there is uh, alarm bells go off. The, the body mind doesn't like this because uh, over millions of years of evolution, our, um, one of the priorities to our survival was actually to be part of the, the tribe and the, the in-group, so to speak. Because if we weren't, then we would either get, uh, or, or even if we were and we weren't in high social status, we would get less nourishment in the form of food and social interactions and sex to uh, some degree. Because these were, these things, food, social bonding and sex all led to the proliferation of our lineage and our genealogy and our genes are hardwired for survival right we have genetic material that has been uh, passing itself along for millions if not billions of years which is which goes to say that there's a massive momentum in us towards survival and that's actually a priority that's that's hardwired in our primitive brain and so there's many things that can threaten survival. And that's just one example. There's other examples of extreme abuse, um, viola uh, violation of our person. And these are other examples of traumas of fragmentation um, that if they go unresolved, they carry a story with us. And then we look for evidence or, or that fragmented part of us is looking for evidence of that in our world and you better believe that it's finding it because we project and we find what we project um, our brain is built to pick is to, it, our brain is built to um, basically create what we are perceiving based on our memory and based on our past experiences, it does this. It fills in the blank, so to speak. And this helps us um, move more efficiently through the world. Because if we had to think about, for example, walking every time we went and walked, and I put my right leg in front of my left, and da-da-da-da, that would um, take away from my ability to do other tasks. And so when it comes to trauma, there's an unconscious part of us that is looking for... Um, the evidence and then ultimately projecting that and then finding that. And so that brings me to my last point. Well, what do we do about this? How, you know, how does healing happen? And so healing happens when the fragmented part of us uh, is integrated back into the whole. And now that can happen in a number of ways, a number of ways. Uh, most important of all those ways is that there's a somatic experience of unification of our energy coming back into alignment and into center back into uh, you could you could label it many ways peace um, groundedness stability um, while simultaneously right this peace groundedness and stability is happening while simultaneously holding the charge of the experience. And the charge is the emotional slash psychic, psychological component of what happened. And so until we can have and hold a charge, because if we're traumatized and it's unresolved, then there's some charge that is still there, that's still present. There's still some feeling that is not neutral. And so can we come to a place of holding that charge while, ooh, I'm gonna get this flower. Mm. Can we hold that charge 
well, being in a place of neutrality and peace and contentment. Or when we hold, and when I say hold the charge, I mean bringing the experience of the thing into our awareness without reacting to it. That means we're holding space for it. We're not trying to push it one way or another. We're not trying to change it in some way. We're simply holding it and, and giving it a container and giving it enough space so that the breath, which is spirit, and the, the current of life force can actually flow into that uh, stagnant part of us and move the material that, is, that has been festering in that little stagnant pool, if you're, we're following the water analogy, move that stagnation out and back into the stream of life. And then that part of us that was fragmented or um, separate then re-enters the stream and that life force that was stuck or trapped actually comes back to us. And if this process is done efficiently and effectively, then we have a greater amount of life force available to us as a result, as, as the final result of this, which means we have cre more creative capac capacity, more sensitivity, um, a broader perception of awareness instead of a part of us kind of siphon, a part of our energy and life force that, that we're capable of having being siphoned off into a fragmented or isolated island of trauma. So that is my share for you today on trauma. I hope this is helpful, beneficial. And uh, if you like it, then like the YouTube video. Peace.